Hi, I'm Ginger Catherines, and uh, thought I'd invite you to come along uh, on a ride with me here at the base of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains near my ranch in Colorado. We're headed up to the Rainbow Trail, which is a hundred mile trail that runs at the base of these mountains. I'm uh, riding Trace today, who uh, is my steadiest partner. You, you remember Trace from me riding him in the cloud movies, probably. Trail riding helps me kind of clear my head and get my thoughts together and, and uh, figure out what we're going to do. Try to stop the government from killing thousands of healthy animals. There go Quinn and Red. Ready! That's Evan's, Evan's dog, uh, Red, and Quinn! Come here. My dog, Quinn. You probably now know him, too. It's pretty hard to imagine what could uh, happen to our horses in the wild and in holding. But uh, BLM wants a quick fix for decades of mismanagement. They've accumulated thousands of horses in uh, holding. And uh, we're advocating putting short-term horses back out on ranges that have been zeroed out. You know, uh, wild horses have lost, well, that's a chicory calling, red squirrel. Um, horses have lost 20 million acres uh, since the act was passed. And the 20 million acres are still mostly there. And there are areas that certainly could accommodate the horses in short-term holding. That would be a great, almost immediate um, reduction in the budget. So that's something we're advocating for. And of course, in the other ranges, we advocate for managing the horses on the range. You know, the herds that are being managed on the range, and I think there are only about seven of them, but those seven ranges are probably safe. Uh, we believe that all of our ranges can be managed humanely, uh, managing numbers, uh, using PZP, uh, advocating that predators not be killed. The government's been asking to have uh, suggestions on what organizations within the government uh, could be eliminated. One of the organizations that I'd like to see eliminated is uh, Wildlife Services. It's a benign name, but in fact, that organization uses millions of our tax dollars to kill millions of predators, animals that they deem to be pests. And some of those are the very animals, like mountain lions, that could keep wild horses in check because they prey on wild horse foals. We know that because they uh, killed all but one foal in the prior mountains one year. So natural means are the best, but in order to limit mortality to reproduction, in areas where there isn't adequate predation, we certainly advocate uh, PZP, and we have a volunteer program that I hope you'll you'll join us. Um, we have a, a a website, not just we, but a lot of advocates have helped to prepare a website where you can volunteer to be an on-the-range manager, and that means you can be on the range managing, helping with photography, darting, uh, note keeping, record keeping, driving, but you can also sit at home and you can put computer and help uh, enter data for all of our herds so that we have a good idea what's out there so we know how best they should be managed but certainly what the government wants to do now is absolutely abhorrent I don't think any of us want to see horse slaughter return to the United States the BLM I think is kind of counting on this as a way to get rid of the horses in holding and also the horses that are yet to be rounded up this year on the range. This is the last cabin before we get to the Rainbow Trail. It's just up around this bend a little bit. I was in South Central Wyoming in what I think is wild horse heaven. It's great grazing land in Wyoming, in the Red Desert, but 2,000 wild horses are scheduled to be removed in the Red Desert, and they could be end up going to slaughter. I, I 
hate to think about this. This is terribly unnecessary. Um, I was just in, in four of those HMAs, and in one of the HMAs, uh, Stewart Creek, where I always see uh, horses, uh, we saw two horses from about a half a mile away. But what we did see were lots and lots of, of cattle. Hi, girl. I asked the cows and some of the bulls if they could tell me, you know, where the horses are. Hi. I was just wondering, have you seen any wild horses around lately? Girl? Hmm. She's not, not saying. We kept on looking. We came to one uh, bombed out looking spot along a water hole where the cows were hanging out. It's not the cow's fault. That's just what cows do. I don't know how many head of cattle are in this area. Over a hundred um, in this yep. area. Easily perhaps 150. But this is just a an example of the difference between the way horses use their habitat and cattle. And this is a, I mean, I don't see any horse droppings at all here. And you, you can see this is a earthen dam and, and a water hole that's pretty, pretty good sized water hole, but the ground is denuded. There are a few sage and the cattle you know, are abundant here, cows and calf pairs. Hi girls. Hey babies. Nice cattle, nothing wrong with cattle except they have really destroyed this area because they camp out. I mean their digestive system requires a sedentary lifestyle. And a wild horse, um, digestive system requires a on-the-move lifestyle to get the poop flowing through. The cattle stay within, you know, a mile or so of water and they defecate nearby in, which horses rarely do, cattle defecate in the water. Nice herd of black, probably crossbred cattle. Nothing wrong with, you know, cattle, but they do not belong here, do they? Not in the numbers that we're seeing. The AML for this entire vast herd area is probably similar to the number of cattle within just a few square miles here. Still looking for horses. In Stewart Creek, we've seen them right here. You seen any horses? You too? Hmm? Guess not. We certainly hope we can stop the removal of 2,000 horses in the Red Desert. It would be, um, it would be a, a, a real shame, and those horses could end up going to slaughter, which is just unthinkable. Heading over to Middlebrush Creek, I think it'll be running high because this is spring runoff in our country. And then uh, you might see some pretty choppy water. I hope the dogs can get across. <laughs> I hope we can get across, huh, Trey? A little more, a little more challenging here. It's spring runoff. Good boy, Trace. Oh. Want a cookie? Hmm? You being a good boy? There you go. Okay. There you go. I certainly hope you'll consider adopting a Mustang. You you sure sure couldn't have a better partner, um, particularly for trail riding or shoot any discipline. 
a lot of these horses are really good at uh, dressage and jumping and all kinds of stuff. Another quick stop before we head into country that doesn't have this kind of grass to nibble on. See the roses are starting to bloom here by this dead tree right there. Glad you could come riding with us today. I'm walking this last mile home, which uh, Trace kind of likes, and uh, I don't mind it at all either. It's good exercise. So please keep our wild horses in mind when you're uh, thinking of making a phone call. <laughs> Make one to those numbers that we've suggested. There are many thousands of lives in the balance, and we don't want to lose a one of them. So you all take care. Thanks a lot. Let's go home, buddy. I like to do this. I think I like this almost as much as he does. Okay, we really are going to say goodbye now. <laughs> bye bye. You've probably heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. Wild horses love two things beyond all else freedom and family. And that's family over there.